Sky Count Country presentations featuring the Ori Uplata ship's bell, a replica of the original aboard the first USS Montana, commissioned in 1908. There will be more said about this bell later. But first, I want to introduce our special guest tonight. First, we want to welcome Governor Greg Gianaforte and First Lady Susan Gianaforte. Greg will have some more important things to say about Montana's commitment to our military and veterans, and we'll introduce Captain, Captain Mike, Michael Delaney, the CEO of the Montana. Next, the current leaders of the session of the Montana State Legislature. Uh, let's see, we have, I know we saw Majority Leader Stu Venton. We have Speaker Wiley Galt. Um, and then we have numerous other House and Senate Legislator, uh, senators and representatives as well. So welcome today. I also want to introduce Attorney General Austin Knudsen, Secretary of State, <laughs> Secretary of State Christy Jacobson, <laughs> Troy Downing, Superintendent of Public Education, Elsie Arnson. <laughs> Montana Gen General Pete Horonic. I believe he's here. <laughs> and we also have Public Service Commissioner Randy Pinocchi as well. <laughs> we are also pleased to have Congressman Matt J Rosendale with us on Zoom. And we want to welcome Congressman Rosendale if he wanted to say a couple words. Thank you, Bill. Uh, it's great to be with everybody. I wish to be there in person, but we've uh, got an awful big state, and I just arrived over on the eastern side, so I won't be able to get over to Helena until the uh, middle of next week. Uh, thank you all so much for turning out to support the USS Montana. I'm um, honored to be a part of this as well. And um, with that, I think we should probably get the program underway with the folks that actually have the information. Thank you, Congressman, and I also want to welcome representative from Senator Tester and Senator Danes' office here as well. <laughs> Congressman uh, Rosendale's uh, Montana State uh, is here, Marissa is here as well, so welcome. We are especially pleased to learn about the future of USS Montana tonight and work with the USS Montana Committee to, in doing so. You'll hear from the chairman, Bill Witsit, later, but we welcome committee leaders and members from across the state tonight in person and online. All our members of this official commissioning committee for the, US, for the Montana, dedicating to supporting her and her crew for the next three decades. And finally, I know we have many veterans with us tonight and online and in person. Of special note are the submarine veterans. Let's have any sub -vet submarine veterans in the gallery st please stand. Thank you for your service. And also give a hand to all veterans that have served our nation. Thank you. Finally, let me say how proud it was over a year ago, um, myself and the Flathead delegation were able to receive this plaque um, given to the Montana State Legislature for their support of this endeavor. It'll be hanging in the hallways of the legislature um, up in the Flathead area with some of the service members and crew. It captures the essence of our state and the people, including our na native brothers and sisters. And in Latin, the ship's motto is inscribed, may she defend our way of life. To say a few words about our state's commitment to the military who defend us each and every day and about the veterans who give us so much to that cause, and to introduce the commanding officer of the SSN 794, here's our governor of the great state of Montana, Greg Gianaforte. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thanks, Mark, and thank to all the legislative leaders that are here. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of this great ceremony. This is a big day, Bill. Getting the bell. Perfect. Uh, and thank you to all the legislators in the room, elected officials, uh, and everybody that's participating remotely. Uh, it's just, it's, this is a great, a great day. I want to welcome Montanans wherever they are as they watch this online. 
Uh, Montana, as you know, has a very proud history of military service. About one in nine Montanans have served our country in uniform, and we have a second highest per capita number of veterans in the country. Veterans are part of the fabric of our state and our communities. And as the emblem of the USS Montana shows, Montana veterans come from many different backgrounds. As governor, I'm focused on ensuring our veterans have, they, have the tools they need to thrive. Uh, Montana is also proudly home to many active duty service members. And, uh, you know, our thanks and uh, just appreciation goes out to each and every one of them. On behalf of a grateful state and a grateful nation, I just want to say thank you to every single one who served this country in uniform. Uh, we have a debt we can never fully repay. Thank you for your service. Putting country before self, you've set an example for future generations of Montanans to follow. Uh, today we celebrate you, and we celebrate the launch of Oro y Plata's Ship Bell statewide tour. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce the man who carries the responsibility of training and leading the young sailors, including a number from our state here in Montana. These young men and women have been preparing the future USS Montana for her role, and as her motto proclaims, to defend our way of life by deterring potential adversaries, and if necessary, protecting our nation and our allies. I was pleased to first meet the commander, now Captain, uh, Michael Delaney, and a number of his crew members a couple of years ago in Washington, D.C. Construction of our namesake warship was in the early stages then, but it was clear from the start that Mike Delaney was an excellent choice to be Montana's first commander and to put together her first crew that we'll hear about in a moment. A graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, Mike is a decorated submariner who has served aboard both ballistic missile and active attack submarines. He has had important shore assignments as well, including one with the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Nuclear and Missile Defense Policy in the Office of the Secretary of Defense. He and his wife Addison and their three children reside in Carrollton, Virginia, and will welcome his entire family to the Treasure State anytime they can come and visit us here. But Captain Delaney himself has been here several times. Uh, he has brought sailors with him so they could visit the expanse of Montana and get to know her history, culture, and economy, and our people who will always support the Montana and the young people aboard her. Those visits have been exceptional for all who have met you, Captain, and your crew, and we thank you for that. And in the case your crew doesn't always know it, doesn't already know it, this submarine will always embark with the support of all of Montana, and any sailor who boards her will be an honorary Montanan. May God keep her, Captain Delaney, and your crew safe. God bless you and all of your missions. With that, Captain Delaney. Thank you, Governor Jim Forte, for that nice introduction. I want to make sure everyone can hear me okay, remotely. All right. I also want to thank the Senate President Blaisdell and other legislative leaders and members for hosting this update at a special time in Montana's life. Welcome, Congressman Rosendale and all other statewide elected officials and guests. I'm honored to have the privilege to address you this evening. Growing up in New Jersey and spending most of my life on the East Coast, I admittedly knew very little about Montana culture and pride. However, in the last three years in command, I have noticed an increased sense of pride and excitement amongst the crew in having the honor to represent the courage and determination of Montanans, a spirit we will take with us as this incredible warship sails far from home in defense of our nation. I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about the future USS Montana. Since our inception and extensive use in World War I, submarines have proven their strategic advantage in speed, stealth, accessibility to denied waters, strike, covert insertion of special forces, and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. With the addition of nuclear power, you can now add range to that list, limited in time on station, only by the amount of food we have on board, and sometimes some would say coffee. 
Our adversaries also recognize their value and have made substantial investments in building high-end submarines to contest the United States' unparalleled advantage in the undersea arena for the past few decades. In order to address the need to continue to maintain our undersea superiority while keeping the per unit cost below that of a Seawolf class, the United States developed the Virginia class. Virginia class submarines are more capable than their predecessors are to operate in littoral waters. They have capabilities to support special operation forces by converting the torpedo room into an area for personnel and equipment. We also have large lock-in, lock-out chambers for diving operations. Montana will be able to carry 12 Tomahawk land attack missiles between two large diameter Virginia payload tubes. At completion, Montana will be the third Block 4 Virginia class submarine. The major improvement for Block 4 submarines is the enhanced material design and reliability. Block 4 submarines will have one less shipyard availability over their life, thus giving an extra deployment prior to decommissioning. Montana is being assembled in Newport News, Virginia, under a joint construction contract between General Dynamics Electric Boat Division and Hunnan and Ingalls Industry Newport News Shipbuilding. There are only two shipyards currently capable of building nuclear-powered vessels in the United States. Montana is being constructed through a modular construction process, and our pressure hull was completed in December 2019. Just recently, Montana demonstrated that she was seaworthy, being launched from a floating dry dock into the waters of the Drains River, where she now sits pierside awaiting for her sea trials. Montana is only a few months away from going to sea as one of the most po powerful warships the Navy has ever built. Stealth, power projection from sea, and undersea superiority is what Montana will bring when it enters the fleet. When Montana is complete, she'll measure 377 feet in length, 34 feet wide, and displace almost 7,800 tons submerged. She'll be capable of speeds in excess of 25 knots and depths in excess of 800 feet. As part of our first uh, major milestone, Montana's keel was laid in May 16th of 2018 in Newport News. This symbolically celebrated the laying of timber for the first ever built ship for the U.S. Navy. The ceremony is modernized over the years and didn't include an actual laying of the keel due to the modular construction process. Instead, the ship's sponsor, Miss Sally Jewell, chalked her initials on a steel plate and a Huntington Ingalls welder born in Montana welded over them. The plate bearing the sponsor's initials with their challenge coin and laid will be permanently affixed to the ship. Montana's maid of honor, Mariah Gladstone from the Blackfeet Nation in Montana also performed a special Native American blessing on the hull. Prior to launch, Montana was then christened on September 12th of 2020. Usually this ceremony comes with a lot of fanfare and is a special moment for the crew, shipbuilders, state officials, and families. Unfortunately, COVID-19 prevented the normal attendance that we typically see for these events. However, the staff at Newport News did an exceptional job putting together a special virtual ceremony with much support from Montana that included the ringing of the future ship's bell and the sponsor's breaking of the ceremonial champagne bottle on Montana's hall. Montana is expected to be commissioned in the spring of 2022, although there is no specific date yet set. This day will celebrate when USS Montana officially joins the U.S. Navy fleet instead of uh, becoming or instead of being called the pre-commissioning unit Montana, she will now be called the USS Montana. A day I hope many of you have a chance to attend for it will be an opportunity to tour Montana publicly for the first time. For those that follow naval history, Montana will be the second commissioned vessel to bear the proud name of the state, almost 100 years following the decommission of its predecessor. Well, there have been two attempts to build a battleship bearing the name Montana. Both projects were eventually scrapped by the Navy. Right now, the crew is training and completing qualifications that require it to take the ship to sea. The nuclear trained sailors have already begun testing and certification of Montana's reactor plant and standing watch in the engine room. We just recently stood up watch stairs in the fore portion of the ship as well. With the ship assembled and most equipment operational, we now have the ability to do much of our training on board. From simulated fire drills to piloting and navigation training, the unique capabilities of our ship allow for exceptional training even while pier side. For the handful of systems that are not available, we still have the capability to utilize shore-based trainers in Norfolk. In the coming weeks, the crew will take Montana's reactor plant critical for the first time, a highly complex and unique event. To date, the crew has exceptionally executed the complex testing necessary to certify Montana for acceptance by the Navy, efficiently executing two major testing milestones in the shortest time ever in Virginia class program history. 
a testament to the crew's readiness and hard work. Currently at 135 men, the crew is made up of natives of over 30 states, and we already have five crew members that have been from Montana. Lieutenant Cody Propelka is a junior officer from Cup Bank and a Montana State graduate. Cody's doing well and a frequent winner of the Cowboy Award, given to the junior officer, demonstrating the best level of knowledge at officer training each week. Additionally, Petty Officer Evan Glenn hails from Bozeman. Evan had the opportunity to visit Montana in 2018 with me and the honor of being selected the Montana Junior Sale of the Quarter during his time on board. I recently had the privilege to qualify Evan as an engineering watch supervisor. For those of you that don't know, this watch station is typically only stood by chief petty officers and senior first class petty officers. However, Evan's exceptional drive and maturity beyond his years earned my full trust in his readiness for such a responsibility. Additionally, some officers have since transferred from Montana include the first engineer officer, Lieutenant Commander Damian Wall from Belt, and two junior officers, Lieutenant Sinjin Richardson and Lieutenant Aaron Bishop from Missoula and Frenchtown, respectively. I can assure you that each one of these individuals are truly remarkable and represent Montana well on board. I would like to close in thanking the citizens of Montana for their support of the crew through the numerous avenues, from hosting sailors in their home during numerous namesake visits or providing Montana-made hot sauce to spice up their meals, to making beautiful handmade quilts for new babies born to Montana crew members or crew chains commemorating the boat's christening. I can go on and on here, but it's obvious that your support has been incredible. I'm thankful for the time you have given me today to brag about our warship as we strive to establish and build a lasting relationship from Montana. It's unfortunate that COVID has limited my ability to travel out and see you once again, but I absolutely cherish the state's natural beauty and all the people I've had the honor to meet while there. In fact, I'm a little bit jealous because my son had the ability to travel to Billings just this past weekend and wrestle in the Montana Open Tournament, an experience he cannot stop talking to me about. He was able to take home the title and send me a picture on my cell phone with him and his incredible trophy wearing his USS Montana Do or Die Big Sky t-shirt. It's an honor to command the submarine after your fine state and I thank you for all your service to the people of Montana. I would now like to turn over the program to a man who needs little introduction in Montana, the Montana Committee President, Dr. Bill Whitsett, as he tells you about the beautiful ship's bell seen before you. Actually, it's covered up. <laughs> uh, since the day Montana stood up as command, I've had the honor of working with Bill. In this role, he's given me countless hours of his time preparing for Montana's eventual commissioning or orchestrating support for the crew that is the envy of my fellow commanding officers. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bill Whitson. Mike, thank you personally from all of us here in Montana for your leadership. And please convey our thanks to your crew, to the shipbuilders, and to all of those who are preparing Montana to go in harm's way with those wonderful crew members of yours. And I want to thank all of those who are here today to, to hear the update about of Montana and also for their support. We have members of the USS Montana Committee, our leadership here, our Vice Chairman Craig Anderson and others. And we also have a number of our supporters here and uh, also across the state. So Mike, thank you. Governor, thank you so much. And Mark, thank you. It's my distinct honor now and pleasure to introduce those in Montana to the Oro y Plata ship's bell. And we're gonna remove the, the cover on it right now because it's important to understand that this bell was cast specially for us by the Bellingham Bell Company in Maine, the same company that cast the bell for the USS Constitution. It's a submarine-sized replica of the original bell aboard the first and only other USS Montana, the armored cruiser number 13, commissioned in 1908 that had a distinguished career that you can read about on our website. The new bell, though, is magnificent also in its connections to the treasure state and to our state motto, Oro y Plata, which, as you know, in Spanish means gold and silver. Cast into this bell are gold and silver dolphin pins that are worn by qualified submariners, gold by officers, silver by enlisted sailors. But in addition to that, thanks to some donors in the Butte and Phillipsburg area, this bell also has real Montana gold and silver elements cast into it. 
In a moment, when this bell is rung by our state leaders and legislators, and by the way, in just a moment, I'm going to ask the governor and Mark to come down and uh, lead the ringing of this bell. But when it's rung, as we said at the preview, at the christening, it's important that we remember, and we remember also when this bell travels throughout the state of Montana, the missions that these crew members will undertake on behalf of our entire nation. And it's important that we always ask, in the words of the Navy hymn, bless those who serve beneath the deep through lonely hours their vigil keep. May peace their mission ever be. Protect each one we ask of thee. Governor and Mark, would you come down and lead the ringing for the first time officially in Montana of the Oro y Plata ship's bell that will be presented to the submarine and her crew at commissioning early next year. <laughs> and now we'd like to invite any other state leaders, legislative leaders, who would like to come up and gather around and, and uh, maybe give that bell a ring to come up and please do so, and we'd love to get a picture or two. Let's go ahead and gather around and, yep. Go ahead. I can't wait to tell my crew how many important people rang the bell. If anybody else would like to uh, give that a ring, that would be great. We'd also like to uh, we'd like to get some pictures. If you'd like to have your picture taken up here with the bell, we will. Commander, our Captain Delaney, and I will be here uh, for a bit longer. And uh, Mike, if you'd like to. Uh, uh, take a question or two at some point, we'd be happy to have you do that as well. This concludes the formal part of the program, but if anybody does have a question for Captain Delaney or you'd like to have a picture taken with the bell, please feel free. Uh, Captain, the question was, what's the size of the crew? Uh, we are 135. It changes day to day, but uh, last I checked uh, yesterday, 135. Uh, and we typically will we'll stay about that number until One. after sea trials. So we're a little bit bigger than your typical crew because uh, of the shipyard availability, and then we'll come down to about 120 once we're fully operational. Thank you, Mike. Hey, Captain, this is Representative Bob Phelan. And uh, my brother was on the 663, uh, the Hammerhead. I think it was the Hammerhead. Uh, what, what is your hull number? 
794. So, little, Thank you. Little bit to celebrate us. CEO, isn't it true that the fuel rods in this boat will never be changed in the entire life of the boat? The, that is true, that the uh, core is not meant to be refueled. So it was designed for a life of ship. And the aircraft carrier, the USS Enterprise, were changed about every three years. Is that correct? I'm not sure if it was three years, but it is true that they need to refuel more frequently. Uh, so that was one of the unique things about the design of Virginia, would it be a life of ship or reactor cool? <laughs> That's tremendous advancement. <laughs> Mike, we have our submarine vets are going to get a picture here in front of the, the bell, and I think uh, that'll pretty much, as soon as they get their pictures, that'll wrap up the program. But we do thank you again for being with us today for a marvelous program. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, everyone else, for having me.